people, I'm Jenny Metherall. I'm a fourth generation witch. Today is the 1st of May, which means finally it's summer. Traditional witchcraft has summer starting on the 1st of May and I am all about it. So here I have five ways in which you can incorporate witchcraft into your every day that goes hand in hand with this, the summer magical season. Summer is my favourite time of the year. I love the sun, I love the flowers, I love being outside. I particularly like the fact that it's warm. I do suffer from the cold and I'm, gosh knows why I live in England, because it's freezing. I often dream about moving to Italy because that sounds about my perfect temperature. Hot. Lovely. Anyway, in traditional witchcraft, your summer seasons are the months of May, June and July. And the reasoning for this is because this is a bursting energy and a growing out energy, a flower energy. In the autumn months, which are August, September and October, these are the setting seed months, the fattening months and the you know concentration of energy months. But at the moment, we're all about throwing our energy out into the world and that really resonates with me hence why I think I love the summer months I mean some people say to me oh I really like the spring the spring is an intense burst forth energy the summer is more exuberant the autumn is more fattening and ripening and the winter is self-reflective and condensing so Cleverly enough, I'm actually filming this video on May the 1st, the first day of the summer month period. And also, it's May Day. I'm not actually able to go out to any May Day celebrations today, but I have done a lot of May Day celebrations in my time, so I don't feel that I'm missing out. It's also pouring with rain here and quite cold, so hmm, quite happy to sit at home in front of the fire. So in today's video, I'm going to give you five different trends that run particularly strongly throughout this summer month. And so the first trend that we're going to look at, because it's summer, is of course, the sun. The sun is now coming into its own, isn't it? It's growing to its full strength. It's been gathering its forces since the winter solstice, and now it's coming to its peak at Litha, whereupon it will then turn its face towards the darker halves of the year. But the months preceding Litha are when the sun is at its most potent and its most abundant. So therefore, this time, rightly so, is devoted to sun Worship is a bit strong a word for me, but sun honouring? In the western parts of the UK, it is a common belief that the sun dances through the summer. This dancing starts either on Easter morn or May morn, depending on your personal beliefs. They are both pretty much interchangeable after all. And it continues throughout the summer. One of the best ways to see this is just to get up early and go and see the sunrise on any summer morn from the top of any high place. You can stand on the top of a tower, on the top of a hill, on the top of a mountain. And as the the sun rises, you may see it dance. This is quite true. There is a sort of haziness to the sun at this time of year, which helps with it wiggling about in the sky. I love it, actually. And there's nothing more glorious than getting up on a summer morning with the birds and seeing that sunrise. It is also the best time of year to collect your flowers. The energy that the earth is putting into the abundance of blooms that we have at the moment mean that they are at their peak. Always collect flowers underneath the sun, unless they're night blooming flowers, such as jasmine, whereupon you collect them underneath the moon. But certainly at this time of year, go out at midday. In fact, one of my favourite recipes of all time is to make elderflower cordial. And it starts by saying, on a sunny day in June, go out at midday and pick your flowers. And that just sums up the summer for me. Harvest your flowers for drying or magical works at midday because this is when the sun has blessed them with its most strength and they are at their most potent. Now this brings me nicely into the number two trend for the summer, which is of course, it is the time of bees. Bees have long been magical. They have been associated with witches for 
ever, and they're considered highly magical by most cultures. Bees are irrevocably worked with witchcraft. Their wax was a magical substance. It influenced our civilization, our human life, um, hugely. We used it in order to cast pots and pottery. We used it as ointment and salves. We used it to seal things. We used it to shape things. I mean, wax is just has thousands and thousands of uses, and it was therefore, and rightly so, revered. There is also the substance of the royal jelly, which, you know, if you use this royal jelly, it changed you from a worker bee into a queen bee, or a worker grub into a queen bee grub, rather. And it, this is magical, this, this one food stuff that can magically change you. The, I mean, our ancient ancestors knew this and realised how incredible the bees are. Bees are associated with health, wealth and good fortune. And quite often you will come across old, well, not quite often, people have found plenty of pouches containing three bees as part of a charm that was buried within a chimney or underneath the floor or by the door in your hearth in order to bring good fortune and health and great luck and happiness to your home. And in fact, the Museum of Witchcraft in Boscastle has a prime example of a bee charm which was found in somebody's home and donated to the museum. And in fact, I have actually a bee charm somewhere, but I actually can't find it. I created a bee charm many years ago of three bees and I've put it either by my window, in my hearth, underneath my floorboard. I've put it somewhere proper in order to bring me the health, wealth and good fortune. And I have to say, it's pretty much worked. I feel healthy, wealthy and good fortunate in my last few years. I'd show it to you if I could find it, but I can't find it. So, yeah. And those of you who keep bees know it is incredibly important to tell the bees. And this is the old tradition that when birth, a marriage or a death or another great event happened within your family and household, the hives must be told and the head beekeeper would have to go out and whisper to the bees so they could talk amongst themselves, either work a solution to the problem or honour the occasion. If you've got great hopes and dreams for the future, one of the finest things that you should do is to go out and find a bee and tell that bee your hopes and dreams. The bee will then return to the hive and tell its hive mates all of your hopes and dreams and spread that word around. And then the energy will be brought to you by the world because the bees will be telling everybody and you will achieve those dreams with greater success. The summer season is not only when we celebrate the sun, it is also when we celebrate the waters of this world. The oceans, the lakes, the streams. There are plenty of fey folk who guard and look after these bodies of water. You know, we have the merfolk for the oceans, the naiads for the lakes, the river spirits in those. Traditional witches would make um, honour these spirits in order to promote, say, if they were going fishing or if they were going sailing or even swimming. One of the reasons that people forget to mention why this is so good for you is because water is purifying and cleansing. It is transformative and rejuvenative. So it is one of the most accessible forms of witchcraft for this time of year. A simple swim in any natural body of water, I don't mean swimming pools, there's too much chlorine and chemicals in them, a lake, a pool, the ocean, would give you so many benefits. Water at this time is also great for meditation. Ocean meditation, sitting on the beach and listening to the low level ripple of the waves on the shore is a wonderful way to really connect to the natural world. And every time I go to the beach, this is one thing that I enjoy so much is to lie there and just listen and absorb the energy of the ocean. And don't you feel so invigorated after that has happened? Our local river is the otter and we swim in the otter with the otters. Lying on your back on a sunny day in the water in a beautiful pool by the river otter, which is what we do all the time, cannot be beaten. The summer is also the time for the fae. The three times when the veil of the world is at its thinnest, meaning that we can see other spirits and other ghosts and other fae as well, are May Day Midsummer and Halloween. 
There are other dates between them where it's also, you know, quite propitious times to see the Fae, but those are the three. And out of those three, two of them fall in the summer months. So at the beginning of the summer season, the fairies will commence their revels. And you might know this because um, there's, it becomes like a frisson in the air. It becomes very electric suddenly. And you can feel this sort of gathering and joyful celebratory energy suddenly just exploding. It's um, absolutely fascinating to see. The Fae, known as the good folk or the good neighbours by many people because you don't want to say their name because that might attract them and you don't know what's going on. Fairies have, um, I think, a bad rap. I've never had a fairy that's not been utterly charming in every single way. I mean, occasionally they can take your wallet and leave it somewhere difficult or pick up your ring and, you know, put it on the side for you because they're just looking at it or whatever. But that's not really bad. It's just, you know, just fairies having a look, isn't it? However, you don't want to cross the Fae, do you? So why not leave them an offering at this time of year? They love honey, the sweet things in life, and they love butter. So why not leave them a little square of toast with some honey and butter in it and a glass of elderflower cordial, which will please them immensely. And my last seasonal trend is, of course, about the bonfire. This is big in the summer and the winter months. It's all to do with the sun and, you know, the midwinter solstice. You have lots of bonfires. The summer solstice, lots of bonfires. And every culture has celebrated the summer sun in this way with a bonfire of some kind. They were traditionally called wake fires because they were there as a vigil for the sun. The Christians took it over and, you know, said, oh, we're going to have this wake fire after St John the Baptist and that was just them absorbing local customs into their own mythology. I mean even now we have a Golowan and Penzance and the Maisie Day Festival which are sort of fire festivals. Maisie means maddened but I think it's a sort of a heightened excitement rather than maddened. It's all about celebrating the sun in the West Country here, we used to light beacons at midsummer across the land and just light up the land. And this has been happening for thousands of years. Our old hill forts would have lit bonfires during this particular summer solstice in order to communicate and celebrate with each other. I appreciate that you can't necessarily have a bonfire in your own backyard or in your own front room. However, you can light a candle. So here is a quick candle ceremony for you to do over the summer months. As always, do start by cleansing your working area with some incense. And then of course, we must cast a circle around the area. I'm going to cast it in honour of the sun. This is a candle ritual, and in honour of the sun and of everything that we have discussed, I'm using some beautiful beeswax candles for this. The ritual itself should be started at sunset, which can be quite late in the summertime. The ritual itself is simplicity. Simply take something to represent the sun, and as you can see here, I've got one of the last daffodils because it's so sun-like in its aspect. Light your candles and holding in mind that you are doing this in honour of the sun and the season. And then as darkness falls, bring in more candles to light the path through the night, which is not for very long after all, because the sun will be rising in a few hours. But there is your candle ritual for the summer. I can't wait to actually get to grips with all of these particular, I can't wait to get to grips with all of the things that I have just been talking about in this video because it means it's summer, it's my time of year. What will you be doing? And do you have any traditions? I'd love to know. We learn from each other in these videos and so please do leave me a comment and tell us all. Otherwise, don't forget to go and look at patreon.com forward slash Ginny Medal. Go and have a look if you want extra content. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. It means so much to me if you do, because it means I can actually continue making these videos for you. And with that said, I will see you very soon.